Hello all and welcome very much to my channel Which Ways. Today I'm here to share with you some of my experiences around working with what people call fairy magic. This is going to just be kind of an overview of who the fae are for beginners, if you should work with them and when perhaps to not, how to start developing a relationship with them and a few intermediate practices for those of you who have a little bit more experience. Please let me know in the comments if you have ever seen fairy beings. I hope you enjoy this video. And I'm going to say right at the start that going slowly and respectfully is super important. And it's easier if you have some previous experience with more human related spirits like plant spirits, animal spirits, ancestors. And I have a video on that and I'll link that below. If you don't, this video will be a great overview for you on the Fae and you can start to let things develop organically from there. Basically, they are powerful non-human spirits and they are most common in Celtic countries, particularly Ireland, where they are known as the Fae, the Fair Folk, the Fairies, the Good Neighbors, the Gentry, the Cousins, and the She, and by many other names. She is a Gaelic word that can mean the people of the land of Fairy, or it can also mean the large Neolithic stone forts like Newgrange that they lived practice their magic in. The word fairy originally meant the land of the fae and some sources suggest that they prefer to be called by other names rather than by the name of their land. I sometimes use both because most humans are very unfamiliar with these other names like fae which is sort of my preferred name that I use. We tend to think of the fae as tiny creatures like flower spirits, but that's actually just a Victorian concept when science was taking over and supernatural beings were being minimized. They are also part of many European folk traditions. In some of those traditions, they are broke down into subgroups like sprites, nymphs, goblins, and lots of other different kinds of creatures and they are also often merged with other local spirits like elves which are actually a little different kind of similar uh, but they're from germanic nordic tradition in celtic folklore the fey are the spirits of the pre-celtic inhabitants of the land of ireland called the tua de danan they retreated to the other world or the land underneath the earth when the Celts arrived. Many of them lived in these large Neolithic monuments like Newgrange, as I've mentioned, which were the entrances to the other world. Other people feel like maybe they are spirits of the wild or elemental spirits or local spirits of the place. And I think that they are all these things and much, much more. There are many different types. Some are quite similar to us physically and appear quite human. Others do not and may appear more like color, light, or even sound patterns and everything in between. And some of them are really closely related to humans and interact with them a lot. And others don't have any interaction with us at all. Christians, of course, thought they were either fallen angels associated with Lucifer or demons. In the past few hundred years, they're seen as closely associated with ancestors or maybe the ancestors themselves. And that's one of the things I see a lot is that as we move further away from the time of the original folklore, spirits tend to get conflated with each other. And many people who do see spirits have reported that ghosts are somewhat see-through, whereas the fae look really solid and human appearing. Over time, the land of fairy has moved farther away from us and the human realm. I would say mostly yes. Many people are born with an affinity for them. And 
often those of us who have that affinity see them and communicate with them as children and then lose that ability as we get older. Again, if you're starting out, I would suggest working with animals, plants, ancestors first, then move on to spirits that are not very closely related to the human realm, like the Fae. The Fae have their own realms and realities that are different from ours. They have a whole different set of rules, so go slow and be respectful, and always make offerings. In folklore, the Fae are very interested in creativity and art and are really close to those who create it, particularly musicians and poets, but all the arts are important to them. Many folk healers and herbalists get some of their gifts from working with Fae allies, and sometimes it's just helpful to get a second opinion or a perspective that is non-human. They are also really good at deconstructing binary choices and offering you a third path, and they sometimes can give you information about magic that has been lost or forgotten or expand the ways you work as a witch, especially if you are trying to reconstruct a magical path and are working somewhat vaguely within the Celtic form of magic. There is a belief, particularly in Ireland, that it is better to refer to them by euphemisms like the Good Neighbors and some of the other names I shared earlier. Maybe this is because it's possible to accidentally invoke them or as a show of respect because, as I said, fairy is really the name of their land. If you are struggling to stay in normal reality or are having any kind of mental or emotional break, working with spirits is quite likely to make it worse. I find fairy magic to be really kind of intense, which can be overwhelming in some cases if you're not feeling well. If you don't have experience working with closing the intuitive doors when you want to, that can also be really hard because often once spirits have your attention, they get really chatty. It's also really helpful if you have some relationship with some kind of protective spirit or guardian. And if you don't, it might not be a good idea to work with the Fae or other spirits that are non-human until you do have some kind of protector or guardian. What you bring to fairy is mirrored back to you and truthfulness is highly valued. Tend to your human body, keep it strong and clear, and that will really help you when you're working from spirits from other worlds. People ask me if they're tricky and my answer is, well, maybe. I think that the reality is that they're very skilled at carefully wording what they say to you and often they imply something that may not mean what it seems like it means. Personally, I've just very seldom run into that. One of the things I was taught about fairy is that it's highly individual and I have found that to be true. So always follow your own intuition. This may start by feeling them around you and that could feel like an intense tug, desire or calling to know more about them. You might also start to sense their magic around you and that can feel very different for everybody, which I know that's not super helpful, but for me it feels like sort of a joyous expansion with just a layer of giddiness on top of it. Also things seem a little sharper, a little brighter, colors tend to be more intense, and there's a little bit of a soft glow over everything. Once you're experienced with spirit magic, a fairy ally might show up and present itself to you. And I think it's really helpful to take some time with that before you accept them and just maybe get a reading, get a second opinion from another witch, or keep checking out, reading some myths, just gathering more information before you fully engage. And it's also really helpful to go to Ireland, which is clearly probably not an accessible thing to do for the vast majority of people watching this. However, if you can go and check out the old stone monuments, I think you'll learn a lot.
As I mentioned, reading Celtic legends is super helpful, especially the ones that are called the mythological cycle stories that are the earliest and have to do with the Fae and the Tuatha Dé Danann. And reading them can bring them more strongly into your life. When you were reading, though, it's really important to remember that these things were written down by Christian monks and they definitely put their own lens on things. And for a later legend, I did a whole video with just pictures and a voiceover that shared the tale of Thomas the Rhymer. And even though that's really problematic by modern standards, in many ways, it's still an insight into the world of the Fae. And I'll link that video in the description. You can start by making offerings to them. Traditional offerings include oatmeal with lots of butter or honey, butter, milk, cream, placed out preferably on the back porch if possible, but outside the door is also good. Be respectful. And one way to do that is that whenever you're doing any kind of magic, you can ask that your work be pleasing in all the realms. Making a cordial blend or liqueur just for them and giving them offerings regularly is very helpful. I find using sweet flowers that bloom in May and early summer are particularly helpful. I do a lot of those, so it's a busy time of year for me, like roses, lilacs, dianthus, which are also known as pinks. Even carnations, if they're fragrant, are good. Alyssum, honeysuckle, and fuchsia are some of the ones that I've had good success with. And if you are advanced at getting yes or no answers, you can also harvest elderflowers. Elderflowers is one that you need to make triple, triple sure that you get a yes before you harvest any part of it. You can also make offerings to the Fae and light a candle whenever you are beginning any creative or artistic work and ask them again that this work be pleasing in all the realms. And a lot of info about fairy magic tends to show up in dreams. These next few suggestions are a little more advanced. If you know how to make your own tools, I would suggest making a wand out of hazelwood and consecrating it to the Fae and Fae magic. Speak an intention like, this is for use when I do Fae magic, but may it serve me well in all the realms. Then I wait until I feel a little tug to use it or I want to pick it up and I'll do a little magic with it and I notice what type of magic I want to do with it and what type of magic that wand wants to be used for. If you have experience at meeting, oops, no, ending that, okay. If you have experience at meeting and accepting spirit folk allies, you can ask for a fey ally to appear in your life. I would make sure I had a protective guardian to accompany me when I did this request and always be very respectful and say something like, may the spirit that arrives to help me have my best interest at heart. At some point soon, I'll make a whole video on calling for spirit allies and that's a little bit more advanced. So. I generally don't do more advanced videos, but I will at some point soon. I hope this overview was really helpful for you and please let me know about your experiences with the Fae in the comments. Again, I always really appreciate those of you who like and comment and share your experiences. It's so meaningful and helpful to me. It just fills me with gratitude to have such a great audience. I'd love it if you check out my Patreon page where I share monthly spells and workshops and much more content. And until next time, thank you all so much. Stay safe and be well.